Hey, this is Steve. And this is RJ. And you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, mining, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. I've been saying watching a lot, uh, which is weird because I still don't watch this show. I only listen to it. So do I. I don't even really listen to it. Let's be honest. <laughs> no, I, I'm like, I, I already I, made it. Do I really need to listen to it? So like I, I'd like to watch the episode, but it's just so much more convenient to right. do listen, you know, just because for me personally, like my podcast listening is my commute when I'm on the bus. Right. And then like, I'd like to do posts early in the morning, my Instagram posts early in the morning. I find okay. that's a good way to get traction. Like post at like five o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Uh, at five o'clock in the morning. I'm asleep. Uh, I get up at four o'clock every day. At four o'clock in the morning. I'm also asleep. Must be nice. Um, I do most of my podcasting, podcast listening, like just same, same thing. Like I guess commuting, like in my car mm-hmm. or if I'm like every once in a while, like in the, I'll just take a break from the office and go like walk around the area that my building is in for like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, lunch break, whatever. Uh, I'll Fair listen enough. to pod then. Otherwise, yeah, I'm same kind of thing, I guess. So yeah. Uh, you got anything new for this episode? Um, let's see here. Uh, not particularly. I got cool things in the works, but we can talk about that a little bit later. Ooh. Um, want to give a few shout outs to some of the cool things that we got coming up at Tele Talks. If you guys don't know, that's what I do. YouTube, Tele Talks, Instagram at Tele Talks. Um, and we talk about tellies and other twangs. That's my and that's my twangs. saying, yeah. Where we talk tellies and other twangs. Wow. So you're you know you got the you got the thing you got flipping flippers with you know coast to coast. Mine's talking tellies and other twangs because everybody's got the, the coast to coast thing always cracks me. I'm like, is that just because one of you is in San Diego and the other one's in New York? I have friggin' Paul Pennington's address. Do I still have it? For a while, I had it memorized. I was shipping him so much stuff. Nice. Ooh. When Wheel of Pedals was like super active, mm-hmm. he was always Rest in peace. He was kind of the guy who broke it, to be honest, because he was always sending his garbage. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you right Thanks, now. Paul. I'm Thanks, Paul. Thanks. I didn't. Is he the one that set the roadkill? I think so. If he did, that's the whole reason why I never submitted a pedal. I'm not gonna lie. No, a bunch of people were like, "Oh, I got this pedal," and like, there's like five things on there I would like. Four things that I would not be unhappy with. And but I do not want to risk in that roadkill. And the roadkill. Even if you guys sweeten the pot, like it was just not worth it for me. Like I wasn't going to do it. I'll tell you the guy who won the roadkill got, I think, two of the TC electronic pedals. Uh-huh. Uh, whatever remaining sinusoid cables we had left for giveaway like three packs of the leftover gear supplies. Like basically everything that we had to sweeten the pot, we just sent to Gave him. it to him. So the roadkill was easily like, you could just take that, throw it away. Still got his, still was getting his money's worth. Nice. nice. Maybe we only sent him one TC. We might've only had one TC pedal left, but we sent like as much stuff as we could. Gotcha. Uh, what's new for me is we're drinking the Paul Anner. Mar Oktoberfest Mars in this app. Yeah. It's not bad. I like it. It's still October. I didn't do you ever do Oktoberfest stuff? No. So San Diego actually has one really commercial one. Oh mm-hmm. well, like every community does their own Oktoberfest, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, even my work does one. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh La Mesa does one that's pretty commercial. They get a lot of local sponsors. Gotcha. And whatever. But the El Cajon one is actually put on by the San Diego German Society. Okay. That one's super legit. And so this is like, this would actually be a beer that they would have on tap there. Okay, cool. Um, they have, so they have like Paul Anner, uh, West, 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 and Fawner, um, a few other, like it's all German. Like that's all you can, you, there's like five German beers and then like Coors Light. Of course, because there's always got to be Coors Light. They're like Light. Miller Light. Went or to something. Islands today. Yeah. Happy hour. $3, yeah. Dollar, Three dollar Coors Light. Is that was that your two beers? N- no. Okay. Okay. No, I did it. I did do one. One of them was. Okay. But I did do. I have a very Kyle from the Tone Jerks turned me on mm-hmm. to Mother Earth Cali Creamin. 
Oh, right, right. Like, it's not going to get you drunk. Is that what they had? Did they have it there? They did. Okay, cool. They even had, like, Sculpin and stuff on tap. I don't drink Sculpin. Neither do I. But, Ballast, you know, Ballast Point. It's garbage. It's just high-scale Corona. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I just don't do, like... I guess the reason why I don't like... Oh, you don't do IPAs, I don't right? do IPAs, so... And, like, that is Ballast Point to me. I identify yeah. IPAs, Ballast Point. That's why, like, well, you should try this and this. And I'm like, I never think to because I'm, I identify Ballast Point with IPAs. Right. Ball- I mean, Ballast has good stuff. I just... If all my coworkers are like, hey, we're going to lunch at Ballast Point, like, I don't want to be antisocial, so I'll go. <laughs> but if it's, like... If it's at a store, if it's Ballast Point, if I if I if it's down to buying Ballast Point or Coors, like I just don't buy beer, I just move <laughs> on. Like I I'm, I'll, I like, I do I'm that, selective I do that on PBR, that bro. If nah, if there was PBR, I would get PBR over Ballast Point every time. Yeah, I guess that's is that my what's new. I guess that's my what's new. Okay. So uh, let's hit this ad. This first ad was sent in by Kyle Smith, the progenitor. Have you ever Kyle Smithing the pedal? No, I have not. You know what it is, though, right? It's like where you raise it up and take a picture. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he actually, was... you know what? I take that back. Yes, I have. Um. So, uh, Kyle again from different Kyle. Kyle from Tone Jerks. Mm-hmm. Let me borrow his like my pedals, um, thing that Joseph made him. It's uh, the peach trees. <laughs> right. Right. Which, Which I had to look at what that was because I haven't Dread. seen Dread. Oh, you need to watch it. It's yeah. really good. I've, I mean, I've seen Judge Dread. Of course. Of course. But I have not seen Dread. You should watch Is it, it better? It's amazing. It's okay. really good. It's a very good. He Because, you know, he did two pedals for. Right. He did, he did the Peace Tree and, and he, he did, did the. Slow Mo, which is the drug in the new. Oh, in the new not. Dread. So that wasn't. A, there used to be a guy. Uh, who skated down um, the boardwalk mm-hmm. in Mission Beach, who I think went by slow mo. No, it's it's the name of the drug in. Um, so he in just Dread. really loves Dread. Yeah, it's a really good film. Anyways, so I did do that. Uh, he let me borrow it. It basically, like my pedals, does like a bunch of like custom stuff. He can do whatever right. artwork, you know? And then he does like. Basically, whatever you want. He has like a list of things that you can choose from that you put in. Okay. Uh, so. So it's just like a handful of like circuit styles, basically. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, but basically, that one Kyle did a, a tube screamer and a, a JCM in a box, mm-hmm. and you Kyle Smith it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, uh, Instagram at Tally Talks. Um, but uh, side note, just a killer jcm in a box like that was interesting it it's it's very reminiscent of um my favorite amp in a box pedal i've ever had is a m audio m i audio crunch box okay that's like my favorite mm-hmm. like i've i've done the pinnacle i've done um which the pinnacle is wampler right yeah wampler okay. I've done um, another one, which is like uh, the MXR Super Badass. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Just the custom badass. The three knob one, not the four knob. Silver, the red one. I've done the red one. Not okay. The, not the other one. I don't. The the gray ones, I think, or the silver ones. Super Badass. Again, I'd probably need Kyle to tell me, you know, the MXR Pro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He's got, he has, he doesn't have every MXR. No, but, he but has a he's bunch got of them. a bunch, you know. And oh, I've done the carbon copy, Kyle Smith, and I don't know if a carbon copy mini is ever going to happen. But wouldn't it because be it's amazing? already an analog delay, which analog delays tend to like take up a little more retail. Yeah. Um. So I don't. I don't know if you can. I Go mean, you probably. I'm. It's not. I, it's less of a matter of can you. I'm sure it can be done. It's more of an issue of can it be done cost effectively? Because the whole thing behind putting out a mini pedal is you want to be able to sell it for cheaper than sure. The so so typically pedal. right. So typically like, but say that- say you use you use a um uh 
I don't know, like a Distortion Plus mm-hmm. um, or a two, DOD 250 or MXR Distortion Plus or whatever, yeah. right? So conventionally, that's going to ha- all ha- be through hole component, right? Mm-hmm. Just your standard smash a, smash anything electronic look inside. That's what you're looking at, right? Yeah. Through hole components. Um, so when you go to like a mini format, it's basically just taking that circuit and and usually it's just making it surface mount. Everything's yeah. everything's small, and for a lot of those parts, like that's readily available. But I don't know for like an analog, like a bucket brigade delay chip, is it, if you're necessarily going to be able to find but that. Wouldn't in a it be amazing version. if it was? It would. I mean, it would be cool, but like I think I that's even, like the, I think that's what prevents that from happening. I would even give up doing like to save space to do like a. It kind of sucks, but do like a predetermined modulation on it mm. because you know the the a regular one's got the two inside internal right uh, knobs to do depth and rate. I didn't the, know that. Yeah, so but when okay. you open it up, it's got two like a screwdriver like trim yeah pot, trim pots um, of depth and rate. And okay. that's how you can control the modulation to go like super crazy if you want. Right. And then they got the little button on the outside that you can click to turn it on and off. Mm. I would even admit that if you could just give me the core carbon copy. Interesting. Co- okay. Co- carbon copy is honestly one of my favorite delays of all times. Um, I think the only thing that's knocked it off recently, just because of cost effectiveness, again, shout out to like my pedals, but have you tried the Wells? I did. I tried it at uh, when we had CoFest. Yeah. For uh with Co so, from the Flippin' Flippers. I don't know if you know the price or anything like I that. I don't. It's 150 and that's oh, with wow. a tap tempo. That I mean that's yeah, that's for 150 good. for a tap tempo, like a dedicated not like flashbacks like audio right, tap. It's right. a dedicated tap tempo. Like plus it does subdivisions if you hold it down and Yeah. Oh, really? Do some crazy, yeah. Jeez. And I think it's like fifteen dollars if you want to do your own custom art. If you don't want one of the standard arts, so I'm just like at that. But other than that, those... I would just put my face on it. So every time I turn that thing on, I'm just smashing myself in the face. He's got a lot of self hate. He's got issues. Um, don't don't cry, don't cry. It's okay. You just like look down, like really sad. Oh, this Steve sad. So anyway, this uh, we got this Telecaster from yeah, Kyle Smith. Anyways. He says, uh, I guess I can't play Dad Rock with this telly because this telly is titled Mom Telecaster. Uh, Mom telly, sunburst, aftermarket neck. Plays and sounds great. Good workhorse guitar. Uh, this is the only picture of it. Yeah, uh, we got some decent stuff. It looks here. like a... Um, Classic vibe, maybe? I don't know. It, when it said mom telly, my thought was like it's a MIM and it's just a autocorrect. And like maybe the guy didn't catch it. Maybe. Um, yeah. I really I, I didn't even think of that. I actually really like the. And, and the th- so the thing too that makes me wonder if it's worth a little more than it's, than it's listed for is that um, this does have a three saddle bridge, though. I, that now could that I look easily at it again, be aftermarket I think, cheap I think parts. it is aftermarket. That doesn't look like anything fancy because, like, you don't even have like the brass saddle. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's, it's. I don't think it's a fan, particularly fancy one. And now I look at it, I don't think. I think it is. You're right. It is uh, most likely aftermarket. This is um, definitely just a parts caster. I feel like. So, do, would you do three hundred for this? No. Really. No, I just I don't know. I would like, do two forty maybe, okay. depending on how it played. Like I'd have to play it. Um, I will say I dig the the buckle rash, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I one thing I don't like, and it's a personal preference, but I hate vintage style tunes, mm, y'all. I can't stand that's them. That's fair. I hate them. I hate them. I'll get a. That'd be the first thing I'd get rid of on the uh, off of that. I I hate them, but honestly, like that's part of what got me thinking. Like maybe this is worth a little more than this is that. Maybe this is worth three hundred, because to me, like even though um, I get it, I I have vintage style tuners on my Jag saying, um, I feel like if these are like decent glucons, mm-hmm. then they're gonna be okay. Yeah, but I get why people don't like them. Um, but 
to me, like that made me, I don't know, the headstock, like it, the fact that it just says, you know, it's an aftermarket neck, but that they used like vintage style tuners Mm -hmm. makes me think like the person who's selling this, like kind of like they know what they're doing. And and in turn, vintage tuners are for snobs. Sure. Calling it, everybody out, but I send mean, your hate this way. But I mean, if that's what, it, if that's that's like again, like I'm looking indicative at, of uh, somebody who might know what they want, right? And again, like I'm looking at like a three saddle um, chrome, like all steel bridge or whatever, and it looks like it might be missing screws, which is weird. Well, also, this is a you can't really get into this picture, but it looks a little oxidized, doesn't it? Like it looks a little. It does. Like it, it looks. I can't oxidized. tell if it's oxidized or just dirty. And also, I will say the thing about this neck is what worries me is that tint mm-hmm. on there, like on the headstock, it looks cheaper. It looks like just it, that yellow. It just that yellow. It looks like it. It could be a cheaper neck, like one of those like ones that you can get off like Amazon for like fifty bucks. Hmm. But yeah, I would do maybe two forty, depending on how it played. Maybe. Okay. I mean, I guess like what. And it will also, this will change another thing. Like I would have to have proof that this is like made in Mexico body. Right. Which I mean, cause if it's not, then I'm, I'm lowering my price. Right. I'm doing like one sixty maybe. Right. I so. just kind of feel like the wear on it. I'm not super worried about whether or not it's in Miami. And, and maybe that Ryan's should. back, y'all. Like, I think maybe if it was, like, classic vibe, mm-hmm. it's still... I think I, I would pay, like... I don't know that I would pay 300 for classic vibe, but no, if I not picked this in up that condition. and got... And if I took a risk and then was like, oh, this is a classic vibe, uh, I would just kind of, like, be all oh, sucks to suck, you know? Did you guys already make jokes about moms? No mom jokes no yet. Mom you want, jokes. Are you here to make some mom jokes? No, I don't have any jokes about moms. I love and respect mo- mothers. I unfollowed your mom. Me too. No, you unfriended your mom. No, I unfollowed her. Is this legit? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, then your mom unfriended you. No, she refriended me. Oh, okay. And then, like, like a, a, when the baby was born. Okay, because I was going to say, then, like, a week and a half ago, I saw something where she was like, Lauren, show this to my son. No, she refriended me soon after that. And then I looked at her post and I was like, this is a disaster. I can't handle this. And so I unfriend. I unfollowed her. I'm still friends with yeah. her. So she can see, you know, baby pictures. And all I that. felt bad for the amount of. Sorry to interrupt, guys. Of. Uh, of How deep I mean, are we in here? Like, 19 minutes. I yeah, felt bad we, for, we for the amount of woke I was dropping on your mom. So I unfollowed her. Oh, man. Uh, Please don't ever use that phrase again. (laughs) Uh, So how deep are we started? What what, what are you guys saying about this Telecaster here? Uh, I'm saying this mom Telecaster. I'm saying 240. I'm saying 240. If that's a made in Mexico body, it doesn't. He wants proof. I want proof. I'm not because I'd go lower than that. What if it's MIA? It's not. What kind of? What would you look at for proof? I mean, wouldn't the inside of the neck have it? Or the neck pocket, so yeah, I would take the neck off. Do do MIMs have a stamp? I, I don't, don't know. know if they have a stamp inside the neck. No, pocket. but they they should have a serial number in the neck pocket, typically, hmm. from uh, what I, I can recall. I haven't owned a PM. But also, what I, what, what I was going to say is what the, the the answer I would have accepted is uh, you pop the pick guard off, and if there is a CNC mount, oh yeah, the, the uh, little hole, the, the little hole, then I would have been like, oh. Maybe that is an MIM. But, and also, like I was that telling... That was a trap question. I'm a I dick. Was, uh, yeah. I was telling uh, uh, Steve here, I don't like the tint of that that headstock. It makes it look cheap. And mm-hmm. I'm wondering, because it is a replacement neck, and I'm wondering if it's like one of those cheap, like $60 necks that you could get off of like Amazon. That, don't look at me when you're talking. Look at the mic. Oh, you know what? Because it's going to get quiet. Valid point. But I, I, I need, <laughs> I need, a, I need Also, a, just don't look at me. I need like, to stick. I don't like somebody behind me like that. It's, <laughs> it's weird, creepy. right? It is. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to glare at the camera because I can look at the little screen to look at you. Yeah, make those people feel bad. Mm. I'm just Anyways, hanging out YouTube. back here. Also, I, I also profess my hate for vintage style tuners. Don't subscribe. Oh, really? You know what? Yeah. I, I you, like know what? you know what, YouTube? 
hey, don't send money to patreon.com slash 60 cycle hum yt send it to patreon.com slash 60 cycle hum cast why because i want your money oh my god wow. that's why yeah there's two shilling. patreons one for the podcast one shilling. for the youtube oh, i'm aware it's not yeah. shilling when only I one started. only one of those puts diapers on my baby Hey, so, I, uh, I actually both have of a, those put diapers on your baby. Yeah, One just puts true. more diapers on your. I, have, I do have a question about that. Did I hear correctly that you do? You're going to start doing uh, sales of your pedals on Patreon or something? Yeah, like that? yeah. Uh, for the YouTube Patreon, I'm selling uh, old demo pedals and stuff I have laying around at discounted rates. Is that the, legal? Do I still get in the inner circle? Are you gonna get sued by Patreon? No one's no one stopped me yet. Oh. Uh, do I still get part of the inner circle and all that fun stuff? No, that's does it. The YouTube Patreon has nothing to do with the inner circle. Oh, so you? It's a separate thing. You're making my life difficult here. Yeah, I know. Just just give money you gotta to choose. both. <laughs> you got to choose between Steve and Ryan or just Ryan. <laughs> You know what? Now I'm just going to choose Steve and give him the money directly. A lot of people have chosen Ryan. <laughs> a lot of people have chosen the the, the uh, podcast Patreon. There's That's definitely true. more well, money I mean, flowing lo- through there. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. Sorry to interrupt your guys. I don't show. see your YouTube numbers. I'm gonna go get a polliner. Nope, there's one left. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, there's a few left. All right, we got anything else to say about this telly, RJ? Uh, how do you feel about the Perloid pickguard? I hate it. I hate it. You don't like Perloid? I'm not a big fan. I, I think it works okay. What do you guys say about Shelly's per- Perloid picker? Did you notice that? That works for that guitar because it's like it? new and shiny. And I think yeah. Perloid works on solid colors. On certain, I, I think it works on green and blue colors. Okay. okay. Um, and it works on sparkle guitars. It does not work on sunburst. I think what works with Shelly is just because it's... The, the Cabernita, it's, it's a smaller pickguard. Mm. I think if it was a full That's a good pickguard, yeah. it would it would bother me too. Very rarely do I like Perloid. It's yeah. got to be like a special thing. And especially because this is like a relic body on the back, the Perloid just feels... You could do odd. like a... Like a uh, I'll be from Sinusoid special. Just take take it off completely. Yeah, I like just that. Just take one. it off. Just no pickguard? Yeah. Yeah. How does that work? Because the pickup is mounted to the pickup. Just mount it to the. You just turn those body. screws around, screw it into the body. Yeah. Frankenstein it. Not that hard, Steve. Come on. All right. This uh, first topic was sent by Greg Dodd. He says, Steve, that's me. That is you. As a <laughs> bass, pl- it as a bass player you. and a guitar player, barely. Uh, what are some tips for a guitarist that, is, that has been relegated to four strings? First of all, you haven't been relegated to four strings. You've been blessed with the opportunity to be a bass player. Second of all, you can say bye to Ryan. I don't think he cares about this topic. I mean, technically it's less strings, but if you're if you're measuring it in mass, it's more string. Here's the thing, <laughs> and I've said it before on other of uh, friends' other podcasts. The bass is a different instrument, guys. Treat it as such. That is my number one thing. You are providing a different service playing a bass than you are playing a guitar, even if you're playing rhythm. Mm. Period. Do you have any thoughts on short scale basses before we like I love fully them. drop on? So it's, like, I love short scale basses. How do you feel about the long bass? The long. Like longer than 30? Yeah. I've never played 35 inch scale. I'm, I'm talking either. like 62 inch. I don't think that's a thing. I'm People who have coming. seen the same show I've seen know about the long bass. And there's probably only two of you. <laughs> is that a Tijuana? Is that a Tijuana reference? No. <laughs> it's from like an adult swim show. No. All right. Don't worry about it too um, much. So Alrighty. so actually that's it's it's interesting because I had someone ask recently just on a conversation talking about short scale versus long scale basses. Mm-hmm. And like I would say at this point, I guess in my life, I'm a bass player first and a guitar player second. If you there watch you my Keep It Simple Stupid, it's probably very evident that I am a bass player first at this point <laughs> and a guitar player second. If you already saw my Teletalks episode, you know what's up. You just wait um, for the Keep It Simple Stupid. It, I'm, I'm sorry, but it gets worse. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Like I ran out of footage. I was like, I tried to cut it, make it look good. I really did. I I tried so hard, 
but the snippets were too small. I didn't I get just enough don't, of your plan. I don't know what to do when there's when a camera is recording. Ah, I'm just yeah, you man. get nervous and you overcompensate and you make mistakes. And yeah, is you know what? But you know what? Keep it real. Keep Steve it real. Keep are, it simple. Steve Stupid. and I are gonna do a video where we both like play a song a together off. and we'll see how Steve can actually play. Cause I don't know. Steve can actually play. Yeah. And he brings it in like a band scenario. No, like I've, I mean, we could, we're not going to do it this episode. Cause I already picked the song out. But like, if we drop, if we ever drop like old morning glass recordings, it'll be like, Oh, like all the lead guitar work is mine, but it's like specific to the song. It's I'm not an off the cuff guy. Like, yeah. I, no, need, I feel you. I need, structure of some sort anyway but that that suits you well with bass playing does it not it does it does because um, that's what you need to do you need to be the the foundation if you right. will um so i would say my first tip for a bass player or somebody who's playing bass who's used to playing guitar is like you mean listen, the other way around who is he wants to go from guitar to bass right but, so i'm saying yeah what i you, you said Okay, so Reverse if you out. find yourself playing bass, mm. when you are used used to playing guitar, I would say the first thing is listen to, um, listen to the vocals less and the drums more. Yes, specifically um, the kick drum. Walk in with it. Yeah, that is your that, job. That is your duty. Yep. That doesn't necessarily mean. I would say that that means that if you are in a scenario where the where the bass is only dropping on the one and three or maybe only the three or only the one you that doesn't mean you're only playing whole notes and half notes but if the drums are playing four on the floor mm-hmm. if you're not locked in i don't know what you're doing yeah. it better be really damn interesting the the bassist and the drummer are really like a band within the band. Yeah. Like it, they are the foundation. They are the ones who are le- legitimately leading the band. Yeah. No, they, they are. Yeah. They're the, you know, the drummer boy of the army. <laughs> you know? I, I, I had, I, I had a band practice this past week How where my, you? my rhythm guitar. What does your, what did your wife think? <laughs> what does my wife think? Where the, the rhythm guitars That's couldn't a throwback. Couldn't, super throwback. Where the rhythm guitars couldn't make it, mm-hmm. uh, but the bass player and our substitute drummer, because our regular drummer can't make the show, uh, could make it. And it's like they didn't even really need me there. Like as long right. as both of them were cool with each other in a practice right. and could figure out the songs together, then the show's gonna be fine. Like I didn't really need to be there. So yeah. I I also me personally, fun fact, if you guys don't know, I actually do do a lot of bass work. Like that's what I've gigged as. You do the, that, you do do that? I do do I do do the bass. <laughs> Appar- so total aside, my my 3-year-old apparently knows the words to Baby Shark somehow. Despite the fact that my three-year-old is... You guys vi- just witnessed a double sidetrack. I uh, sidetracked him, and then Steve super sidetracked him, and then I sidetracked... That's a triple sidetrack. It's Bam. extremely um, selective on the language that she picks up. Like, she's... Te- she's. I would say that she's technically a nonverbal child. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently she has chosen uh, Baby Shark as a vocal reference that she has decided to copy. I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not either. Oh, it's a big meme right now. It got all the way to James Corden. James Corden, Josh Groban, and who is the girl? I one of those people. I don't know who the other person Steve, is. I the first person. Steve. James Corden uh, was um, the replacement for that other British guy on late night TV. Steve and his family are a big pop culture family. That's, that's true. That's, that's lovely. True. Yeah. What was that guy's name? Craig Craig Ferguson? I don't don't look at me, dude. Look at the mic. I'm talking to the mic. Talking to that big hairy mic. Yeah. I am the object of distraction. Yeah. And trying to be the, the like the producer telling them how to, what to do. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, you're thanks, supposed Gary. to be behind the camera I doing know, that. Right? Anyway, <laughs> um, so the thing I always say about about bass though is that bass is like a bridging instrument. Yeah. I don't absolutely. think of I think it's limiting to think of bass as one, I think it's limiting to think of bass as like a purely rhythmic instrument. Um, but two, like I, I think there is value in 
And that I don't think the bass has to be locked into the drums like 100%. No. But I know a lot of guys who are like, oh, I've played guitar. Bass is just the same thing with four less or with two less strings. And all they end up doing is playing guitar parts yes. on guitar. And so they're not locked into anything because they're in their me? own. No, they're like they're <laughs> locked you, you in with the, you two to me? They're <laughs> locked in with the other guitarist of whoever the the yeah. guitarist. Or the in the case of Ryan, like, they're locked into the guitar they wish they were playing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> where's the where's the with the whammy bar on this guy? I'm no, in trouble and with this so face. when I there first, is a hip shot trim. I know, I know. First when I first started doing bass, like I was one of those like I'm gonna play with the guitar, but then I realized well, that's not really do anything. That's not ex- accenting the drums. Right. And it's weakening the drum parts that my drummer's playing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I started finding this balance where I would do, like, I guess you could say these little licks or these little fills. Right. That's where you can be creative. You can still be creative. You don't have to be locked in, like you were saying. Yeah. You can, you can do little bass fills, little bass lines in between the pocket that make it interesting and more fun for you to play. And it it wasn't until I started doing that to where I really embraced the bass. And it wasn't just like, Oh, my band's already got, my band's already got two guitar players and they need a bass player. So I have to do it because I'm the low man. I mean, that is how I started playing bass. That's how I think almost everybody started playing (laughs) bass. That are like the, the smart people who are like, Oh, there's more gigs in it. If you're a bass player. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Oh no, I'm telling you like in Texas there's a, so many more gigs as a okay. bass player. That's the thing we should have you know what? Let's see. Are do any of these topics I hate? I don't know. Pedal board versus amp for tone. You guys love this topic, pedal board versus I mean, amp. I can talk about it. You got We're, good notes there. I know, right? Here's my notes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you should copy off his notes. <laughs> Don't cheat on me. <laughs> I'm going to scratch this one. Sorry, Doug Gann. Which one was it? The second one. The amp one? The amp one. I don't oh, know. Fine, whatever. That. All right. Um, <laughs> This week's sponsor, as always, is Sinusoid Pro Audio Couture. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the sliver, it is the smallest soldered cable that doesn't suck on the market. I only say that because somebody pointed out those rock board cables to me, and I don't know if they're smaller or not, but I bet they suck. Dang. Just don't throw in shade. Like that. I don't, they, they are, th- those ones are all molded. These ones are soldered. Uh, if they ever broke, which they won't, you could fix it yourself. Hey, um, that's, yeah. They are, they're definitely tiny. I think they actually are smaller than the rock board ones. I got a bunch of them around here. You know what I'm talking I'm, about? I'm always, you guys unplugging. know what I'm talking about? The rock board, like the flat ones. Yeah. Oh. So they, yeah. Well, you're bringing that the... up because someone commented about them. Yeah. Somebody was like, oh, on the pancake video. That's yeah. what it was. That was a super old video, by the way. Pancakes. Pancakes. But yeah. I, I've got a bunch pancakes. of these around here. Pancakes. <laughs> my, uh, my patch cables take a lot of abuse because I'm always completely unwiring everything I set up for demos and then rewiring it it's not like cables that sit yeah. on a board that are just static and never get adjusted these things have held up great yeah i have not had a single one fail me in probably a year of using them exclusively in and demos. you definitely like because of the the flow rate of pedals that you get you're constantly rewiring yeah your oh yeah these I use these exclusively for for the videos, and so they get completely like tweaked around and rotated around and put into new pedals on a daily basis, and they've held up fantastic. I'm thinking my next batch of cables I am going sliver personally, just because I told you previously yeah. that I did do solderless. Now I haven't tried their solderless, um, but honestly, like I made a board and then I sold that board. And so now that board's and gone. Compare it in size to a standard soldered jack. Yeah. But now that angle. that board's gone, like I have a bunch of custom length cables that are useless. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just like going to go, I think I'm gonna go sliver cause they do some cool colors. I don't know. I don't think they do sea foam, unfortunately, or surf. I don't remember. Uh, I know they do orange. Which it is, is a, cool. spe- it is they a specific cable a for the slivers. So yeah. a bunch of colors. It's Ugh. the GS6. Um, For some reason, I thought GS6 came in that color. It does come in. If it comes in surf, like you've got me sold. Like I'm going to order some for my board. So I know I'm doing a like color coordinated board. Mm. Nice. 
uh, all surf green. It's going to have uh, a Veritex dynamic distortion on it, the surf green limited edition. It's going to have the wells. Right. From like my pedals. Um, trying to think what else. I, I'm not sure what else I'm going to put on there, but those are the two for sure. Surf green. What's up? Oh, someone like needs to come up with a pedal that you that you can like slip a little sock over it and change the color whenever you want. Like when you put those uh, shrinky dinks on there, like you put on Easter eggs, put a new wrap on it, like whenever you feel like it. Steve is uh, Snapchatting again. Shut up. The <laughs> colors for the sliver are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and surprise me. Oh, okay. Uh, which so seafoam uh, is not. An I know option. they do those like uh, specials. Did you see when they briefly did text the tech flex, flex on these? Yeah. Yes. So How there cool you go. Is that? White was white an option? I already forgot. White's always an option. Uh, and white and then do aqua, like the, the do a, seafoam do a seafoam tech, or like the walrus specials, like what I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you which go. Are awesome. Whew. Sinusoid Pro Audio Code Co- Sinusoid Pro Audio Couture, uh, sinusoid.com. They, they make, make cables. cables and smiles. Nice. Well played. All right. This next ad was sent in by David Luna. This is an Earl Slick SL59 with strap slash strap locks. $150. This is at Coors and 40. This sounds like a place you need to go. That Ryan. It definitely <laughs> grabbed my attention. I was like, wait, is Coors done with this? What's going on? Did you hear that the, the founder of Coors died recently? Yeah. Did you mourn? How many Coors Hot, did you drink? I only had one left in the how fridge. Many homie, how many did you pour out for that homie? That dude was 102. Dang. That's the did se- you buy four cases and drink 102 all Coors? His, all of his organs from drinking. That's the secret to long life. Coors, man. <laughs> It'll keep you hydrated. The fountain of youth, Coors <laughs> it's re- Really, the advice is just drink a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you got this uh earl slick guitar here i've always been curious about these Same like I'd, here. I'd love to encounter one in person and Before see what one see what it feels like see how they play because it could be yeah. they're affordable yeah i, no. I wonder if they're like one of those cheap guitars that's like a decent player you know no i um so i've always wanted like a junior style um like junior style kind of guitar uh-huh but like you guys briefly talked about in your Gibson rants and stuff, like our clickbait. Yeah, your clickbait. <laughs> um, I, sir, I clickbait us never. We would it's never. Like a, I feel the same way about Les Paul Juniors. The same, the same way I feel about Tellys. I don't feel like they should be that expensive of a guitar, mm. just because of how they are constructed. Right. Period. Um. So that's what's appealing about the slick. Because they also do a model that is just the one humbucker, like a real junior. Right. And it's a um, soap bar, one volume, um, you know, input. That's it. I like that they have the intonating wraparound bridge on it, too. They do. They do. Um, Though I don't know how accessible that is because it's an inset bridge. Oh, yeah, is it inset? It's, it's, yeah. It's, Everything on this guitar is like set into the body. So, so it's like I've, super flat. I've actually, I forget who it was, but. Um, one of the early reviews on the slick stuff that I saw was that somebody had received a guitar where because of the, it was like inset too deep. So the strings were like hitting on like the 22nd or whatever fret. Oh my gosh. Like it was like too deep, but I mean, it's a really clean look and I will say like, I don't know if this relic is original. I do like this I strap. Think they when come they have, kind of beat I've, up. Yeah, they come kind of beat up. So put it in, put if, it on the old rock tumbler. So when they announced these guitars, there was a couple of Nam videos going around, mm. and they were talking about how like they don't purposely go out of their way. They'll add a few blemishes, but it's meant to be worn in. Like, <laughs> that's like part of their quote unquote appeal. Is it's supposed to wear in how you play it. Wow. Um, yeah, bless you, by Steve. the way. Um, but no, I'm, I'm very interested now. These are bolt-ons. Um, I do know, I do know that the, neck. Are, okay. the, the ne- necks are bolt-ons. Well, I hear that a bolt-on neck will never sound as good as a set neck guitar. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? Telecasters rule. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, 
Um, but no, as far as what he's asking for, so they go 200 new. I know mm-hmm. that too. This guy's asking 150. I would probably give him like 110. Okay. I, I'd go on that 110. Do you do you recall what these were selling for originally? I don't, no, 200. I mean, I, 200. Okay. Yeah. 200. I, I'm looking 200 at one right now. Plus, as I mentioned in a previous episode, uh, they... Um, that shipping, dude, that guitar fetish shipping is going to kill you. They ding you. Yeah, they okay. really do. I, I'm looking at the headstock on a, on a different one. Mm-hmm. I hate the logo on this thing. This like, like, it's, it's just like a... It's got a freaking dude yeah, standing it's, on it's, 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 it's Earl Slick. Here, Steve, look, look at this. It's Earl Slick. Yeah. <laughs> it would have looked so much better if it was a just a K instead of a dude standing there. It should there. be the K, but like a like a German style K. No, I want that block text all the way across. Here, I don't want a freaking little thing dude about the standing slick, on the headstock holding another K? guitar. I was just trying to be controversial. Well, no, it's funny that you mentioned that because Earl Slick, guess who his signature guitar is through? I think it's like Duesenberg or something like that. He has oh, an actual signature guitar, not his but, line. But I, didn't say, I said German, not, not Korean style K. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm interested. Like I said, I'd I'd go at 110. I like the tuning pegs on this. You got those big like they're big old brass fat things. brass yeah. tuning Ooh. pegs on there. Those are sharp looking. The headstock is like I dude. Like just it. put some just put some electric tape on it. I like the headstock shape on this. It's kind of that like snake head sort of throwback. Yeah, just very simple sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But I could see other people. Thinking that's a turn off. So What's this you... truss rod cover? I don't know what it is on that one, but oh, it's, it's right... oh, okay. I see. Is that like it's a like custom a... one? Or no, is... it's a checkerboard. Oh, it is a checkerboard. But when it's zoomed out, it looks like some the funky. Glenn, it it looks like a bumblebee. I wonder why there's. We found a, checkerboard a bumblebee on that one. inside of my lab today. Hmm. Bumblebees Tantrums. are cool. Bumblebees are cool. You don't see them around very also, often anymore. They're not supposed to Save exist. The world. <laughs> Wait, what? save the bees, save the world. That's what I hear. Bumblebees are not supposed to exist. Like, yeah, did you guys see like the, their their existence is impossible? Did you guys see the episode of Black Mirror with the bees? No, I've seen all the episodes. I don't remember the bees though. I, I think that was the episode hated in the nation, where the bees like kill people. i I'm looking at all these other slick guitars. I'm feeling like that double cut model is my favorite. Have you seen the one with the single, humbucker? Yeah, I see that. Or, I'm looks, sorry, single the, P90. It's got a P90. Yeah. So they do cool colors. They but do, I mean like that body shape, like the double cut. I think it's my I favorite. I know you guys don't name guitars, but hold on. Can I, can I see your phone? Do you have the website pulled up? I'm just looking at Google Images. Okay. So they, are, uh, let's see if I can find one. Okay. So this one, the, the surf phone one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I really like it. Honestly, you know what it reminds me of? I would want to call it Sully because it reminds me of Sully from Monsters Inc. Oh, okay, <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> the 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 yeah, it totally remind, reminds me of it. But no, I've been curious about getting one just because. Um, I mean, they're cheap. They're cheap, but again, they're simple. It's not like there's a lot to go wrong there. If the neck is good, then it's if the gonna... neck, yeah. But if you get one of those bridges like what Steve was talking about, then. Yeah, what we're super do? low. Yeah, what do you do? Well, if they're they're bolt on, you can shim them. This is true, and also honestly, I feel like this is like some you just do crazy things to. Yeah, some mod. Like I would put like a days. Bigsby on it. I'd do some just crazy. I mean, could you put a Bigsby? I on might it? throw like a softball at it and throw it <laughs> off a bridge, and then throw it at my kid's slide. I mean, I'm gonna do the 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 pickup testing thing with this guitar, but really yeah. like that sort of thing would be perfect for that kind of modification. If it plays well, it could be a great pickup tester this or is like true. circuit tester or weird modification tester. No. You want to like practice, How do you feel practice about gold hardware? Frets. I'm um, not a gold hardware fan. Every now and then gold hardware does it oh, for me. As I break your phone, I'm sorry guys. Uh, but like, it's got to, just be like the perfect guitar yeah. for gold hardware. I have a green bass that has gold hardware. That's the only instrument I've ever owned with gold so hardware. So living in downtown right next to the Ochin. I don't know what that is. The Ochin? The Ochin. The like Ochin. The, what's that? Okay, so the Ralphie Mays. The Ocean. Oh. 
Uh, Downtown Golden in San Diego is not by the ocean. By the bay. Uh, Down by the by bay. The bay. Do, 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 it's do. By, point being, it's by seawater. <sighs> okay. I can see Coronado Bridge from my rooftop. Ooh. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Gold That's Hardware. That's how you got those tones. It's a cool bridge, guys. It's a good bridge to, oh. to brag about. Like, oh, it's a no. good bridge. You're it's like, a good bridge. Hey, guys, want to go look at the bridge with me? Mm-hmm. And you can see all of the downtown area, including the. Well, well how come we're not there right now? Why are we podcasting yeah. here? Uh, I've okay. First of all, I may have not invited you, Ryan, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know how many times I've invited Steve over to my place so we could record videos. You know how many, and he's like, yeah, man, totally going to do it. Just got to let you know my schedule what? free up. You know what? It sounds very familiar. That, <laughs> you, know, you, know how you and I will talk later. You know how sketchy that just Steve. sounded? You know how many times I've invited Steve to record video? <laughs> just come up on the roof with me. Just come on. Steve, we can, come look at the we bridge can look me. at the bridge and record a video. No, we, uh, no, dude, I know. I'll cop to that. Like yeah. I, my schedule is very complicated. So, in other words, to get 60 Psych over, I have to invite Ryan over. Well, now I know about that bridge. And you can see the library. I can see the library. Yeah, the dome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that what that dome is? I've driven by. (laughs) Steve thought that was the weather control device. I just always see it like. (laughs) From from Batman. I'd be like. Robin forever or whatever. I'd be like driving home. I'm like, what the hell is that? Welcome to 60 Cycle Hum, the uh, San Diego building review podcast. Yeah, no, this that's is, uh, the, this, that's no, the this library, No, this appeals to our dude. geography fans. <laughs> I don't that know. is the library. You think I go to the library? I can barely read. That's, that's a joke. Of, that's supposed to be the jokes about me, Steve. I was going to say, I thought the you did the copy. One. You're the scientist, dude. You're, you know I how to read. Science. I'm supposed to be functionally, functionally illiterate. See, I can't even talk right. <laughs> Words are hard. We're messing up our whole like personas here. I know. know. Suddenly, I'm I'm Ryan. You're Ryan. Are you Ryan? We all have beards. We do all have beards. This is a joke from two weeks ago. At this point, yeah. All right. Remember remember on the Facebook group when everyone was posting pictures of people with beards and saying that they looked like me? That was clever. (laughs) What's this other clever? What's this other topic that you just magically so brought up? So this other topic I had is um, that you denied me of the other. The topic. other, Earl, I don't know, I don't the, know what the you. Earl mean. Slick signature is a Framus. Framus. Oh, it's a Framus. That's right. Yeah, there Not it is. Bad. That's why I was thinking it was German. Mm-hmm. Gross. Because it Framus is. is German. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was thinking Duesenberg. Uh, mm. Whatever. I'm racist. I guess. I don't know. Like, I just took the name and just uh, went with it. I don't think you can be racist against Germans. Whatever. I think that they have earned a lifetime a millennia. They've got a Just they've got go a there. complicated history, is what Steve's getting to. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. What's this topic? Um so wow. earlier you mentioned he's that st- he's making it up. He doesn't er, know no, actually. Shut up, I do. I just have to <laughs> After you like, turned down a perfectly good topic and you can't put it into words. Oh my God. You know, we didn't do this last episode, so my thought was like, okay, so you are Teletalks on oh, Instagram yeah. and on YouTube. That's my bad. But who is who is uh who is the man, the myth, the legend? R- RJ Smith. What about me? What do you um, want to know? Well, because you mentioned earlier, like, oh yeah, if you're a bass player in Texas, like, man, like you're in like 15 bands. Um so I, I guess like, you know, tell us like, yeah, you do this thing, but like you do tele talks, but like, mm-hmm. I, I know you haven't been in San Diego, like super long. I've been here going to be a two years in uh, January. Okay. So you, so two years in January, but you, at the same time, you don't have an accent. No, I don't because I was born and raised in California. I was ah. born in the IE Corona oh, represent geez, born dude. in really? Riverside. Is, that, is, is Inland Empire a thing that anybody actually wants to represent? No, it's garbage. <laughs> this explains why last episode when Ryan was like, Hemet is like a thousand miles away. You're like, no, man, it's only like an hour. Oh, no, no. It's only an hour just because my girlfriend's uh, parents live in Murrieta. I feel it's like Murrieta, too far away. I feel like Murrieta is closer than Hemet. Though. Yeah, but not by much. Like tack on another like fifteen minutes in your Hemet. No I mean, right, you right. won't know that you're in Hemet because it's Hemet and there's <laughs> nothing there. <laughs> but here's the thing: like if there's if there's nothing at a place, 
Is it something? It feels like it's so much farther away because it's like we just lost. What else is there to we just do lost there? all of our Hemet listeners. All, oh, two, all like, zero of them. There might be two people out there. They only listen when they're you know cooking up crack and stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. I would, be, I would be interested to find out if people do listen to this show while they are while cooking crack, cooking meth. Yeah. Okay. I you know I'm not gonna we do have I'm a large San Diego listenership I'm so not judge <laughs> um, but no like uh, I guess like tell us you know this is funny because it's at the back end of the second episode that you're here yeah uh, but tell us a little bit about about you and your musical journey I guess what makes you tick don't just. <sighs> <laughs> no okay so um you know i've been playing guitar since i was probably like 14 13 like seriously playing uh basically what happens so like that's like what like five years oh, yeah. see what i did there I called him an see old man i, I called <laughs> he called me a young man what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> We're all 17 year olds <laughs> to be fair i might be the youngest person in the room probably that is are. accurate that is accurate. We're going to list out ages here. I mean, we can, but what are I, you? I am 34. Oh, Wait. I'm 37. Really? You yep. look great. Thank you. Oh, but I, I don't <laughs> look great. Steve Just right. is a wretched hag. He is ruined. I'm 27. There is no tread left on the tires. As far as Steve goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we, we don't do close ups on Steve. Oh. <laughs> this camera's not high def, is it? <laughs> no. Dang. <laughs> no, but um you know, basically what happened is I moved to Texas my freshman year after my freshman year of high school. Okay. After growing up in California. So I moved to, you know, my thinking uh, you know, back at backwood. Trying not to curse. So uh, backwood. You can curse if you want. Okay. We look, Back you know, ass in the middle of nowhere, Texas. In my ass isn't a curse on this show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. We'll try harder next time. <laughs> I did an episode with the Tone Jerks, and they're like, at the, at the end, they're like, yeah, we really try to dial it down. I'm like, why? They're like, well, it's your show. I'm like, yeah, I no. told you before we started recording that you can say whatever it's you want. It's kind of like, like Batman doesn't murder people, but all sorts of people that he interacts with murder people. Yeah. We're Batman. Ba- we won't curse. Batman but- doesn't murder people. The ground after he throws them <laughs> off the building murders the people. The concussion murders them. <laughs> um, Anyways. So, where, so where, where in Texas did you land? Basically uh, North Texas. So like the Dallas Fort Worth area, but outside of it. So still small, small, small town. Um, when you moved there, did they make fun of your California accent? No, it was actually a good way to. What a burger versus in and out in and out um you gotta like mustard a lot if you like whataburger because a don't... texas burger is mustard like all I, mustard i do like mustard though. it's mustard like when i get lettuce, my ultimate like cheeseburger from stuff. jib i pretty much just get mustard anyways the <laughs> ultimate what from where the ultimate cheeseburger from jib What's Jib? Jack, Jack in the, box. the Box. Oh, so Steve actually that's funny you mentioned that there. because only gets tacos from and, uh, the ultimate cheeseburger <laughs> in Texas is actually called uh, the Big Texas Cheeseburger. It's just two patties and some bacon, guys, and some cheese. Anyway, so... And like a cup of move mayonnaise. There. That's why I get mustard, because I don't get mayonnaise. And you know what? Because when I get you mayonnaise... You ask me questions When I get topics, mayonnaise, my wife stops talking to me for a week. You asked me topics. Welcome to the show. We yeah. just interrupt each other. <laughs> Absolutely. No, um, so I was a, you know, a lonely, sad little boy in Texas with no friends. So that's why I focused on guitar. Oh, okay. And then from there. Now, hold looked, on. You just said the California accent helped you pick up the ladies. It did. It's, so it, how lonely were you? Oh, I'm talking about that first summer. Cause okay. I moved like, I moved like a week after I got out of school. So like I didn't have that school to like make mm. friends thing. Mm. So I was like by myself. Well, what was your first guitar? A silver tone. Oh, uh, what no, actually it was um a Bessler acoustic that I got when I was much younger. It was garbage. It's called Bessler. It was like some like brand that was like sold to me at like this rink-a-dink shop in Corona. Okay. Uh the second one I bought was a silver tone strat knockoff. Bought for seventy five dollars. Like one of the newer silver tones, like the, yeah. Okay, mm. that's unfortunate. No, it is. <laughs> um, I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that's just kind of where it branched off. And then in high school, 
I started doing, um, I went to a, a small academy where we only had like 120 students total. I okay. mean, that's for every grade, ninth through 12. So there were like three fourth graders and like. Nine through 12, okay, bro. Okay, you, you, you know what I mean. Like there's like like a dozen, you know, juniors. and Yeah, it was small. But point being is we never had football or anything like that. But we had awesome like technology based uh, electives. And one of them was film. Okay. So every year they would do film, uh, films, the whole school would put on the thing. And I was like, Hey, I want to do the music. And so that started me down doing, um, scoring film. Oh, cool. And that's, that's where the majority of my experience with recording stuff started was doing that, figuring it out on my own. Um, then after that, it started like, oh, I started doing college films. And then I started doing low budget, no budget indie films uh, to the point where I've done 12 films now. Oh, wow. Cool. Four documentaries and one video game. Anything we've heard of? No. <laughs> the are video you, game's you... educational. It was uh, a small run. I have to learn things. It was like based off, it was like a history thing, like based off like, it was like an RPG Based off like Roman times or something. I forget what it was called. So what you're saying is you did the score for Age of Empires. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That was, I said, so no, I played a lot of that game when I was way younger. <laughs> I was a big fan of like, like real time strategy games. Huge fan. Starcraft. What's up? Hey, Starcraft. You we know you're out there Starcraft? watching. I played what Starcraft. Did you? Yeah. yeah I listened to a fan. podcast today where they talked about. No, no, I watched an episode of, uh, um, actually, you guys, no, okay. I'm waiting to finish, finish that All right, up. so, so you were there, and then you moved here, mm-hmm. back, back here, I guess. Back here, yes. A couple years ago. For love. Okay. No, your, 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 like, did like, your, like, so... Was your girlfriend here? Was she yes. there? And then she moved Steve here? Steve is very cynical. He doesn't we're, believe we're in gonna, love. We're going to he... get into the that is not 60 true, Ryan. cycle. What is actually true is, I believe in a thing called love. I knew that was coming. Because that's in the rhythm of my heart. All right. Sorry. Um, no, like me and my girlfriend met my freshman year. We went oh, okay. To, in, in Corona, we stayed in touch. Then uh, going on three years ago, we decided to give it a shot long distance. And then I was like, hey, well, time to move. Mm. So I moved here to be with her. Anyway. And then what sparked all of Telly Talks was boredom. Boredom slash I had done (laughs) stuff before, like looping videos. Um, but I really wanted to get into talking about gear because I used to listen to this uh, podcast. Don't know if you heard of them. They're called 60 Cycle Hum back in Texas. Sounds uh, like a bunch of losers to yeah, me. I heard yeah. those guys are a couple of dicks. Huge dickheads, especially the ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was you. <laughs> hey, man, I'll take it. <laughs> the ugly tall one. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> the cheerleader, the ugly one. <laughs> But no, and honestly, what really sparked it, though, was the, I'm not going to lie, the 200th episode met a bunch of people, a bunch of awesome people. You guys. It was like, a fun show. It was really cool. And Man, I met. That was like a year, literally almost literally a, year a year ago. ago, November. Yeah. And, you know, met the Tone Jerks and they're like, hey, we're starting this podcast. We're a couple episodes in. Yeah. We have a episode we're uh, coming out where uh, Kyle talks about shitting himself. <laughs> There we are. That's awesome. <laughs> you I know? always say that if you're an adult and you don't have a story about how you pooped yourself one time, then you haven't lived. That's right. I don't think I pooped myself as an adult. Only as a... Then you haven't as lived. A, then you haven't tra- lived. As a, Obviously, you're not the alcoholic I thought you were, Start Steve. taking risks, Steve. <laughs> start taking risks. I don't need booze to, Anyways, to poop myself. I can do it just <laughs> fine without booze. And uh, so, yeah, Teletalks spawned from that. I thought... You know, basically the first year I was here, I didn't have a lot of my gear. Right. So I was very limited on what I had versus me back home. I Mm -hmm. have this, you know, pedal train pro size board with like everything on it that I couldn't take with me. Because when I moved here, I literally got on a plane and moved here. I didn't bring any of my stuff. 
Is that well, stuff still waiting for you back in Texas? No, somewhere? it's all gone. Okay. You sell it? The, well, I did bring a lot of it back and then I ended up selling it. That's a whole other okay, story. Sure, sure. But, um, you know, just plugging straight into amp, having like one or two pedals sparked the idea of keep it simple, stupid. Right. You know, the, it's where you get a small board, you choose four or five pedals to obtain a genre that you have in mind and you just go with it yeah. because that's all you had. Which I think like, I mean, I'm a telly guy and I've watched everything, but I think the keep it simple series is really like, like that's something really special because yeah. I think the idea of like, you know, you can, my, my regular pedal board that I was using is I think 11 pedals. Mm-hmm. And for the keep it simple, stupid, I broke that down to like four pedals and and um and my amp simulator. Mm-hmm. Um, Check it out, Tele Talks. And so the yet. thing that I haven't um, figured out yet is like whether or not I can survive without a volume pedal. But it was like a really fun um, for me exercise. One because I had I had a small a smaller board was how can I fit these four pedals onto four pedals plus again, like this little box onto mm-hmm. a, um, a smaller board. Yeah. And then what, like really thinking through like of all the pedals I own, like if I had to reduce this down to four pedals, what would that look like? Like it was a really fun mental exercise as, yeah. as a musician and really like, I feel like I put something together where I'm like, well, I have a reverb and I've got, two delays which like having a reverb delay combo pedal allowed me to do that yeah and then i've got two dirt dirt boxes so i feel like i've got something really versatile no modulation well i've got i mean you i've got some modulation with, uh, the, I've got, the kilobyte has kilobyte, a, yeah. has modulated delay if i turn tacos all the way up and Mm, tacos (laughs) and you know that was my thing is it's not so much a budget series like a lot of people want to do like oh under 500 i'm not saying you have to have cheap pedals yeah like but the point is you can invest into like four really awesome pedals right or you can buy like every you know more pedal <laughs> like, whatever it's 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 so much work on your budget but at the end of the day it's like what is it that you really want because chances are it's only gonna require that many pedals right. to get what you really want i can't i can't guarantee this will happen obviously this episode will drop 10 days from now um i'm actually we're working on getting um something into review right now that uh, if it comes in, we may have to revisit Keep It Simple Stupid. Because, oh, I just remember the thing you're talking Because about. I might have to drop down to like two or three pedals. Really? In order to make this work. It might it might be a dedicated baseboard. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Okay. Um, but um, I'm trying, we're working with a pedal builder right now. And one of the things for me that's really attractive to it is, is my bass rig right now. Everything I use when I play bass fits in my music area backpack Mm -hmm. um so uh this company makes a pedal board that will fit into a music area backpack but it's it's expandable which is which is really interesting and we'll see if we even get this thing but it's kind of funny that you want to get this thing just because it starts out small yeah and then it's expandable but you're not going to use that functionality right which is which is um which is kind of interesting because it yeah it's you know the expandability is is the draw on there on for them for like mass marketing but to me the draw is that um uh I just got an email from the dude. Oh, well, then you better read it right now. Uh, he wants the standard demo package. Okay. So it looks like Ryan's making a video. I'm going to make a um, video. Um, but the idea for, for me is that it will fit in an ultra compact space. Gotcha. Um, but it's actually an expandable pedal board. So it's a pedal board that's built into a pedal board. So you can like stretch it out to make it twice as long. I wonder if that's you can just connect the two sides and have two pedal boards. Mm, I don't know. Hmm. We'll, have to, we'll have to look at that. That Maybe that could be one of your videos. Side oh. note guys, if you want Ryan to do it, uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm throwing you under the bus. If you want to do, if you want to see Ryan do a keep it simple, stupid board, leave a comment below. Oh my gosh. Threw you under the bus. Yeah, Ryan, yeah. pick four pick pedals. Four of like I could, millions you know, of pedals. I've, I've been using my, my big pedal board for my surf rock band. I could go down to like three pedals for that. And I used to keep. A, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a try to guess guess them because I'm sure, pretty sure, sure I've, I know you well enough or your tone well enough. It's going to be a DOD of some sort. 250. 250. Uh, it is going to be probably a delay of some sort i don't know what delay I, I, i'm not too well versed on your delays and then it's gonna either be the new what is it called by uh um source audio the, the new, true spring the true spring something like that yeah or it could be the frv the, the fender nah i'm kicking that to Boss. the curb I'm okay done dang. With, i'm done with dang. it dang um are they still going for like three hundred dollars? No, I think they're like they settled down to like two hundred or something like that. Still yeah. more than they're worth. More than they're worth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like those are going to be like your three pedals. Um, I can probably do without the delay these days, but it is two fifty, a reverb. Uh, I like to have a tremolo, oh, and then a go. tuner. And then, I don't know if you count the tuner, but I could, you know. No, I don't count. So that's my thing. Unless it's a volume pedal, I don't count utility stuff. Okay. So yeah. So like, like tuners. So my amp. So if there's room on the board, then if it there's didn't count. But the the appeal that I wanted to do with yours is because it was an amp. Oh, okay. And because it wasn't didn't have an amp, I was like, I wanted to mm. show the people what if, an ampless rig is. What if there's room What's on the bit? board? Because we're not counting a tuner, then I'll throw in a, a DD3 or the memory toy on there. And I just have a couple parts in songs where like I rack the time knob to make weird sounds. Okay. Cool. Um, you want where to is your memory toy? Right up there. Right there. In the corner. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's in a hard um, to see spot. Now, my question to you is if you didn't do the source audio, would you? Do an actual spring take like your Fender? There's such a pain in the back. I was going to say pain in the ass. <laughs> and then the I went butt. for butt and I said pain in the bass. Uh, there's such a, a pain in the ass to haul around to shows. Okay. And they can actually be kind of delicate. Okay. Um, and I don't feel like the uh, the tone reward is there that enough to more. go through it. Especially with how great that thing sounds. I, I listened to your demo. Yeah. I've, I've been running because I've been using the big board. When I do my surf rock band, I do the oceans 11 and the true spring or the Ventress. Okay. And I go back and forth song to song. Okay. Uh, mm. There's some songs that do better with the oceans 11. Then there's some songs that do better with the source audio version. Uh, the source audio version uh, of, of the, uh, the spring reverb is like fuller in a way. Where the Ocean's Eleven is like cleaner, tighter, brighter, you know? Got What's it. your band's website? Is it dinosaurghost.bandcamp.com? Probably something like that. You can find us. Just check Google it out. It's on Dinosaur iTunes. I, I, I have that uh, album on my phone. I've made $100 in CD baby sales over three years. <laughs> Was it worth that studio time <laughs> that's, you paid? That's more than I've I made. remember you talking about that on an episode a long time ago. Yeah, how, yeah. Like, you use like a busted up twin that only had like one speaker working or something. You should probably me? talk into the mic. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> trying to look at you, man. Yeah. The, Why the, can't you just get like real? I know. Over here? It's I, I hold a bunch of I'm amps like into this. Doing this. I hold a bunch of amps into the studio and uh, we ended up using an amp that lived in the studio that was a t like a silver faced twin reverb where one of the cones of the speakers was just blown out. And for some reason, it sounded great. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys want to see the episode, keep it simple, stupid. You should like make a comment. So yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Convince <laughs> me. <laughs> Anyways, so but yeah, that was my that's my journey as far as tellies are concerned. I just love the simplicity of them. They're nothing. I don't feel like there's a guitar that's like more rock and roll. How do you feel mm. about like like the super modded tellies out there that are like? Are they even tellies anymore? Like once you put a tunematic and a big B and like P90s in there, is it okay. still like and you know four knobs? So like four that. knobs. Are they still telecasters? Oh, so like the, so like I've the owned... Fender. So Fender has that. Uh, I guess that's really the question. Is like Fender has that uh, 
parallel universe telecaster. This I want year. one the the troublemaker the the Les Paul one. Yeah, yeah. I, want I, I think we just really is that, that, question, is that still a telecaster? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So you know, is it, that's, it, is it a shape? Is it like what do you think? It's a shape, and also I think it's it's a few things. It's a shape. It's a hunk of wood. It's a bolt on neck. It's a I maple think those are fretbed. Are they? No, they're not. Oh, they're bolt. So if, right. so if, is a. Fa- <laughs> This this sounds like we're like just grilling you. No, no, it's fine. Um, Go ahead. So like the Fender, I can take it. The Fender FMT, which was a which was a set neck, um, mahogany body, maple cap, the dual humbucker, humbucker. And it's got like a carved top. Yep. Yeah. Is that like less of a Telecaster then? Honestly, I think Telecaster. It's the same way that I look at like punk. It's it's a it's an attitude. Mm. That is associated with the guitar, regardless of pickups. Because you know what? We talk tellies and it's called Telly Talks, but technically I play a Cabernita. Yeah. I play true. Gretsch pickups in a Telecaster shaped body. It is my favorite tone I've ever had. I've had regular made in Mexico's. I've had the Fender Modern Player si- series with the Humbucker single single. I've had uh, a 72 Deluxe that I absolutely adored. Unfortunately, I had to sell it due to mm-hmm. responsibilities. Um, granted, it's a fun story. Is uh, The guy I bought it off of, he sold it to me because uh, he beat me on a deal. We were friends, and he beat me on a deal. And I was like, if you ever sell that guitar, you have to tell me first, and I'll <laughs> buy it from you. So I, like, I bought it from him because he needed to buy a twin reverb for a tour he was going on. Okay. And he's like, if you ever sell that guitar... You have to tell me first. So I sold it back to him and we, we're going to keep that going until we've exchanged it probably like six more times, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a 72 deluxe that was, I adored, but it's just an attitude. Like it's a mentality. It's a mindset. I tell you, it's a mindset for me. It's like you just, you're there, shut up and play as, as you know, um, James Murphy from the LCD sound system says, shut up and play the hits. Mindset can't argue with that. That's right. By the way, this think, is really cool. By the way, do you think this is a Telecaster? Absolutely. Got, got, and I've been, I played it when you were gone, and I was like, That's all I he love wanted that. to play. While that's all wrong. I wanted to play for the l- listeners. I pointed at the uh, the airline uh, 59 2PT, yeah. which is a airline body style, style but it's got a Telecaster, Telecaster pickup loadout. Pickup and loadout. So, that being said, like, yeah, no, I totally think it's a telly, and like, it doesn't have to be a fender, like, or anything like that. I'm not like a diehard fender person. It just so happens that due to my budget, fenders are the best thing for your buck. But, like, for instance, you know, uh, you got the higher stuff out there, like Jennings is releasing a telly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we'll be doing some cool stuff with in November. Um, It's his. Of gonna be his new affordable line, right? That's supposed to be really cool, and I'm looking yeah, forward a, to getting like my hands a on sub it. Sub 2K line, right? Yeah, it's 1500. Okay, which is, I mean, that's an American made guitar. Yeah, but you're getting it from two dudes that built it. I mean, granted, I know they. I'm pretty sure they do CNC and stuff like that. Whatever, but whatever. So does everybody else now? Yeah, but you know, you, you get something really special. Yeah. But no, it's just like it's a mentality, yeah. a Telecaster mentality. Mm. So that is it. The Eastman is that what Eastwood. Is it? Eastwood. Eastwood. I'm sorry. Eastwood. Eastwood. I'll forgive you this time. Okay. Next time, however, I love that guitar. That net pickup is amazing. Yeah. I I kept it. I'm not gonna lie. I pretty much kept it on there the whole time. Mm. I love. I was playing it. I just love the the pickup set in there in general. I love the bridge pickup. I've had Telecasters over the, over the years that I just didn't bond with. Just be like, ah, they're so bright, or they're too twangy, or this and that. And that guitar just sounds fat. That it's that neck pickup. And so, my question to you is: Have you ever played a seventy-two deluxe? I don't remember. Probably. (laughs) So that's why I like that guitar. Like an original, not our original. I played some. I played actually my um, my aunt. I've never like breached this. It was my uncle's guitar. Um, who has passed. Um, but my, so the last time I was, uh, back East, my, my, my father's side of the family is from, from Indiana. Mm -hmm. Um, so my aunt 
uh, has a uh, 72 Deluxe. Um, like an original Sorry, one? not 72 Deluxe. No, it's a it's one of the Japanese reissues from the 80s. Very cool. Um, and it was actually like flooded. So it's kind of like, tech, like at this point, it's kind of like, I basically told her, I was like, look, like, I don't want to like, I want to give my cousins first dibs. Mm-hmm. One of my cousins has expressed some interest in learning guitar. They're all older. They're all in their twenties. Yeah. Um. So they've expressed interest in learning guitar. Um. But I told her I was like, look, like if you want to get top dollar for these, I might be able to help with that. Or if you want to just leave them to me because you want it, like, or I'd say if you wanted to leave them to someone who you know would love them, mm. I'm de- like. Because it's a it's a seventy two. Yeah, I'd love to flip them. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the I played both of them through a Harmony H four hundred tube amp, which is a little four watt through an eight inch speaker tube amp. Okay, which it's one of those amps that you can put on put to ten, and it's still not really loud. It's just dirty. Yeah, JWU like kind of blow up. It's like a thousand JWUs. Okay. Like you can't get more JW. Well, you could, it just have to be loud. I forget how that scale works. I know that it like, it hits a certain point where you like diminishing returns and things get oh, okay. worse uh-huh. and then they get better again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anywho. Anyway, the other one with that is a Gibson EBO. Speaking of short scale bases. Nice. Um, um, so the reason why I brought up the seven two is because mm-hmm. That was my, on the guitar that I had, uh, that was the neck pickup is where it's at. And okay. that one, that's what it reminds me of. Mm. That's that's the, gotcha. that pickup, I can't see where I'm pointing, but over there, that neck pickup is basically what it sounded like. And I loved it. Yeah. It's a great guitar. Is it worth the price though? That I don't know. Uh, I, I will say that. I I didn't know that they lowered the price, but I thought they were like, 1000 new like when are, they first they came not, out are they not i don't know like what the current sub- pricing is uh, yeah i thought they were sub nine i thought that but... one was like 899 or something like that okay i can't remember i don't know exactly. if it's necessarily worth that but it's a great guitar it's fun to play I mean, definitely fun to play check the used market definitely i might have to do they do any other colors that are worthwhile like i think that one only comes in white and black oh mm. bummer yeah i know i wish it came in seafoam like that one all right, That's this right. last or ad. gold. This last ad was sent by Alex Edwards. It says custom guitars make an offer range 300 to 2,000. Fender strap body, <laughs> not original neck, gold leaf used. I mean, if you've got $2,000, he'll take it. And a lot of other materials, hand carts, painted and lacquered, put together by me, Jeremy Anderson. I mean, if you're, AKA Jay Duzzy. Jay Duzzy. A Jay local, Duzzy? A local Duzzy? Oh, wait, you're saying this is a guitar by Jay Duzzy? A local artist, I know that. musician, and repair. I do custom work also. Just ask and I will do what I can. I will post some of my work for Into C. Do you have other pictures in that? Super Rich Steve uh, says this nope. has my name written on it. What am I what am I looking at here? Oh, it's garbage. Dude, it's uh make bad. me an offer. Guitar took me two weeks to do is that a that's not even a lot that doesn't sound like a okay. no it's not a lot of time uh, and a lot of deep detail up close if interested call a number original hold on original laid <laughs> what are you doing dude you're fighting over the iPad for well. Alyssa Newman I wonder if she's related to our most recent subscriber or our most recent donator Martin Newman uh, and not for sale yet but just an example maybe for right price make an offer I have others I'm working on complete dragging guitar made out of a Lotus bass guitar and hand painted and will play perfect if interested call. So this is a this one is a strat covered it's not even a strat uh I guess the they say it's a re- <laughs> replacement neck. It is covered in gold foil. I'm not even convinced this, this is actual gold foil. I no, it's this, like it's like craft store gold foil. Yeah, yeah. No, this is like I bought a roll of Reynolds wrap and spray painted it gold. Or no, no, no. It's even worse. It's like uh he ate a bunch of like Rolos or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or you got the you got the just crumbled almond them Hershey's together. bars. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at the headstock trying to figure out 
the it looks like a origin co- of it looks it. like a court headstock. Yeah, it does kind of have that. Oh, that so, um, so the other, the with- other picture on here, the other guitar that's in these pictures is like an ovation body with a bunch of scribbles on it. Oh, let me see that real quick. Um, and it looks like he took just uh, the scribbles look actually like a Dremel etching. I wish we had tip. the other pictures because the, the lower horn What's is up? crazy. But look at also look at the pickguard. Yeah. You see how the pickguard's like actually it, hanging like, over the body? Yeah, and it's a weird shape. I can get and more can I see... can get more photos for the for the upload. Um but yeah, the the strata itself, man, like I'm looking at this tiny little picture of the body and it looks like there's some sort of gigantic yeah, yeah. Scru- so, so structural look, element over like the playing area. So it's this this flower right here. Yeah. There's another one of those down on the lower part of the body. That's actually kind of below where the where the bridge is. And there's one. This looks like it's up. not meant to be played. This thing is just weird. I just burn it with grab fire it because it's yeah, it's a burn it with fire. So he invites. And what is you. he asking? He he three hundred to two thousand. This he, one he kindly maybe four fifty. He kindly asks you to. Make an offer within that range, three hundred to two thousand dollars. Um, how close to two thousand do you think you're gonna get on this? Uh, zero. It, no, not even close. Pass. Super rich Steve. I this is imagine, eventually I gonna become Im- a segment of Super Rich Steve. I can't imagine the target market for this. This is like a bizarre, like craft fair. Like art I don't piece. even want to look at it anymore. But it like it might as well be covered in, That's how in gold spray painted macaroni. It looks super like- rich. Steve says eight hundred dollars. Oh, shows up in the driveway. Says this guitar is excellent. I love it. Purchases eight hundred dollars worth of guitar. Hands over the money. Walks out to the end of the driveway. Puts it on the ground. Pulls a can of gasoline out of the trunk of his Bentley. Pours it onto the guitar, drops a single match onto the body of the guitar, and drives away. Probably got that good gasoline too. Mm, yes, it's Chevron with Tecron. Yeah, the high premium, octane. Oh, high man. octane. That is right, sir. No, but it's really bad. I I don't even know what's going on with that horn. I, I know I know you commented it earlier, but I didn't get a chance to really comment on it. Okay, go for it, man. It looks like testicles. It does. <laughs> Kind it of looks look, like it looks, it looks like, like a whole like a bunch of testicles, like a, yeah. like a fistful of testicles. A collected like it's like gold you, members' testicles, dude. If you, fistful of desicle, fistful of testicles is like a Clint Eastwood. If you harvested uh, like like five or six uh, testicle bags and like those like, are, and like, grab like, them like all, nut grab sacks? them all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it would look like. Just no, a absolutely. fistful what are you of testicle talk? bags. What is that? All right. I mean, you're harvesting. No, seriously, you're like, harvesting you Rocky that, Mountain oysters or something. I think. I think I'm. I'm out on this. You guys got anything else? Grandma's gonna love your little project. All right. This guy should give it to his grandma. Along right. with his ashtray that he made. We need to send this. Yeah. We need, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan. Ryan needs the cone of solitude. Uh, this week's song was sent by Shannon Penner from. Punk Plunk and Bloom Audio. He says he does pedal demos and stuff on YouTube. So I'll try to find a link to that. He says, I also I also record mostly instrumental music under the name Orbit Over Luna. Uh, this track, if we if all we have is now, uh, was all played and programmed by me. My setup is a direct one, Ampless. So all the guitar and bass sounds are using real pedals, but into software. The attached MP3 again is called All... If all we have is now um, is the name of the track. Uh, so thank you, uh, Shannon from Plunk and Bloom. I'll drop whatever links I can find. I will figure it out because that's what I do. See you guys. Bye. Bye.